What's up guys, Peter Von Panda here. Hey, I just bought myself something. Shinola's got my number, man. Uh, they know exactly how to hook me and reel me in. And this is a limited edition watch that I just ordered. Um, I'll tell you right now, it's the Shinola Cannonball, limited to 1,000 pieces, I believe, and at $1,000. It's a version of their Canfield. I'm just gonna unbox it here, because this is a true unboxing. Just received it, it comes with a couple of the Shinola Guaranteed Cards, a uh, postcard of how to Instagram your Shinola, a little handwritten note here. So when you wanna drop some money on a Shinola, you can find things from Shinola in their watch collection that are gonna be unique and I think good looking. Now, there is a premium to be paid for that in their Great American Series or, you know, like the Rambler is a beautiful watch. You can certainly find a lot of these models in non-limited edition form that are gonna be a little bit cheaper, but if you want something that's gonna get you into the foundry, which is their exclusive limited edition owner's club, you know, a watch like this is gonna do it. So uh, this may be wrapped in this little tissue paper here for the holidays, I don't know if that's something they'll always do, but it is what it is. And then you get this beautiful, oh, uh, I'd call it a, a royal blue box. I almost feel like there should be a really exclusive bottle of whiskey in here. Shinola whiskey. I bet they could do that with the uh, the Detroit whiskey company. What is it? Two brothers or something like that in in, in the city. Um, and so you can you can see here the Canfield Cannonball, and what it has here is an embossed uh, map of the United States with this silver overlay of where the uh, you know the the trains ran. Cannonball is a reference to the train. I'll talk a little bit more about that. So let's go ahead and. Just unbox it here. And the first thing you'll notice when I unboxed it is that there is a record sitting on the front. This is a 45, I believe, kind of your small record. And it comes in what I, I'm assuming is Shinola leather, maybe Horween leather. And it's a leather sleeve, a brown leather sleeve. And here is the record itself. And um, this is going to be foreign to pretty much everyone out there except for uh, a few of us. But as you can see here, there are two sides of the record. In fact, there's something like hand scribbled on the center here. Shinola TBD, not sure what that means, but uh, obviously you can see a kind of typical standard 45 LP. And on this side it says the Wabash Cannonball Lucas Nelson, who is Willie Nelson's son. And he recorded, I think exclusively, a version of the Wabash Cannonball song that a lot of other guys sang, including Johnny Cash, so you can listen to those versions. And that's about a fictional train that ran from Detroit to St. Louis, but ended up becoming a real train because of the song. So they did end up, I think, uh, naming the run, the, the Wabash Railroad that ran from Detroit to St. Louis, the Wabash Cannonball, because of the song. So in this case, the song was singing about a legend, which actually became reality. Yeah, you know. And then on this side, it says, Set Me Down on a Cloud uh, by Lucas Nelson. And I believe this is a, uh, another recording kind of specific for Shinola. So we've got that. And I do have a record player, a turntable, that we're going to go ahead and listen to it on. And then it comes with this book in the matching blue. And man, there's a lot of packaging. And Shinola does a really great job of it. Uh, this talks about the, uh, the music that inspired the Wabash Cannonball, and I won't go through all of this, but show some of the stops, some pictures. So um, obviously it's kind of, you know, celebrating the history of railroad, kind of like ball watches, you know, that really were actually used by railroads. And then we've got the watch itself and set in this really <laughs> elaborate box here. So again, a navy blue sleeve on a traditional Shinola box. And we have the Shinola card and, and booklets and all that in there. So here we are finally, the Canfield Cannonball. And here it is in all its glory. It's not gonna be any different than a lot of the uh, Canfields. And the Canfield line in the male line, at least in the men's line, is a 43 millimeter stainless steel case um, and here it is. It, what's interesting again, and I've noted this about my other Canfields, which I, uh, you know, finally pulled the trigger and I couldn't help, but I had to get, is that they are a top loaded design. So you get this really huge dial for the size of the watch, right? So you can see, you can see the bezel, but 
Uh, the case around it is not very imposing. It's very, very slim around the sides, and that's because they load everything from the top. They kind of take the bottom half of this clamshell case, and they load everything to the top, and then they press everything, the top portion of the dial, the, the glass, everything into it um, in the case, and press them together, essentially, and screw them together. There's a little bit of a coin edge right here, and that's kind of what separates you know, uh, visually the can field from the uh, the runwell is that the runwell is all usually a, a polished case or it's or it's all the way around. Uh, can wire lugs, you know, very similar to the runwell, but obviously a little bit narrower. You know, on this watch, it, they're 20 millimeters. Now, uh, it's kind of this pebbled uh, leather band here, and it's in a really dark blue. It's almost blue black. I, I know it's probably a little hard to tell on camera here, but uh, you know, one of the things that I was kind of concerned about is that I'm not going to really wear a bright blue band. Now, I do on my ball, which is also a very railroad-inspired watch, but it's a very navy blue, but this is almost black. Uh, you can actually, I actually have a blue sweater on, even though that looks really dark, and it is dark, and it's a very similar color. It would actually be a perfect watch to wear with this sweater. Um, now, I've got a fairly big wrist, and one of the things that I noted on my other Canfield is that the band itself is not super long. So I've got plenty of band, uh, you know, it's actually, it's not it's not even tight, uh, you know, but if you really wanted to wear it loose, you'd, you, I'd probably be using this hole there, which would still give me extra room. Uh, there's a couple of retention straps right there. Beautiful polished buckle right there. Kind of even a little meatier than maybe some of my other you know, Shinolas. But the beauty of a 43 millimeter case and the size of this case is that it is it's large and that top loaded design kind of makes the watch look a little larger than it is, but it's not really large in the context of if you're wearing a, a dress sleeve or something like that, uh, sleeves fall over the watch really, really easily. It's very unobtrusive, you know, on day to day and moving things around, you're not gonna knock it. It's not overly brilliant, but this white dial is really beautiful. I think this is a great looking watch. I really love the Canfields anyway, but this one is unique for a couple of reasons. And I'll, let me point out that those design elements that make this one different. So the first thing is obviously as kind of a tribute to railroads, why not then put a railroad outer ring on this watch? And they did. And you can see here, you know, this outer ring here, which looks like a railroad, and that's why they call it that, um, you know, marks off each minute. They have uh, the minutes uh, with Arabic numerals on every five here. And that's really because, you know, railroad timepieces, you know, the railroad pocket watches that were really popular, um, had to be very precise. So uh, you'll see a lot of those vintage watches with minute markings, you know, very distinct minute markings. And sometimes, you know, like aviators watches, the minute hand was the most important hand. So you'd even see sometimes uh, the hour hand being a subdial in the watch itself. So uh, right here, obviously a big focus on the minutes. Uh, the railroad uh, track on the outside is is something I really love. I don't actually have it on a lot of my watches. If you look at my Bell & Ross, my Guinemere limited edition watch, it also has it. It's actually very similar to this watch in, in some ways. It's a 44 millimeter case. It's one of the watches that I wear a lot because it's so beautiful and so comfortable, simplistic, and yet really really elegant and and you know it's funny because the last time i wore it someone actually said oh you have a shinola because it looks very similar to a shinola now um that watch was like four grand so it's 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 a little bit of a different type of watch with an opening dial but this watch is very very similar it obviously would be confused from people that actually even know watches uh but this is by its own merits, a really beautiful looking watch and very similar. So we've got a lot of pocket watch influences here. We have some pretty broad, uh, straight hands here. It looks like there's loom on those hands, uh, but the loom is very white if there is. We'll find out in rolling footage if there is loom on this watch, uh, but it's very, very white. It doesn't have a kind of ivory finish if there is. And so if there isn't, it's probably white to really make this dial and the elements come together. But if there is loom, that's great. It's another nice feature. Uh, the subdial here with the seconds, which you can see counting off, is silver and it's textured, you know, with the, the concentric rings. It's very, very subtle. I will try to get that on camera, but it's kind of like its own little record, you know, like this. It's, um, but uh, it's really, you know, you can kind of see how it shimmers there, kind of suggesting that, that there's texture on it. 
Uh, but again, that is absolutely silver. It is a contrast to the white, um, but it, it looks metallic and almost makes it look like it's porcelain on top of a, a metallic backing. So really nice. All the printing everywhere is black. You know, obviously Shinola, the Lightning Bolt, the Argonite 1069, Detroit. Uh, I love that Detroit in, <laughs> um, in there. I wish that were even maybe a little bolder because I love people knowing that I'm from Detroit. And even though my line's lost today, it is what it is. Uh, you can see here, applied numerals and they are black and they really kind of you know on close inspection you can see how they uh really sit on the dial and it's going to be a little hard um at this angle to see possibly because the crystal is kind of domed it's a domed sapphire crystal which is nice but it's kind of giving you a little bit of wash out and a little bit of distortion but you can see there the numbers are all applied. So it's really nice to have that three-dimensional effect on the dial. It's a really subtle thing, but you can tell your eye and my eye can probably pick that up when you're looking at a watch and everything's just printed on the dial, as opposed to having some relief in the dial that kind of makes things pop out. So just a beautiful watch then. So this is gonna probably be a daily wearer for me. And uh, just because the size is so nice, but then it's, again, it's also a little bit uh, unique from a design standpoint. Now, I don't believe the Canfields have the screw down crown. As you can see, I can just pull out the crown right there, pop it in. Very standard Shinola crown. You can see some concentric circles there where it's machined out in the, the lightning bolt logo. Some really, some really aggressive point edge to that, kind of like an old school pocket watch, you know, onion crown. So just really beautiful. Again, this one isn't the high-end movement for the Canfield. If you go up to the Canfield Chrono, can't remember which movement it is, but uh, the Chrono movement is obviously going to have some pushers and a stopwatch and things like that. So this is really going to the base Canfield uh, because it's only the one subdial in time, no date or anything. But what they've done here is really made it look, I think, really beautiful. Beautiful in its simplicity, beautiful that it's referencing kind of something that's foundational to the the expansion of America and the railroads. Uh, if you're like me, maybe you've taken Amtrak from Chicago to Detroit. I took that a lot before the prices went sky high. But, uh, you know, I've had some time on the, the, the rails, uh, and I've actually taken a cross-country trip on railroads, too. And it's fun, man. And if it were cheaper, it'd be something I'd probably do again. But it's just kind of nice because that's kind of a piece of history that we're losing very quickly to air travel and driving and etc etc so last thing i want to do is let's go ahead and move from this to this now this record i think kind of replaces a a larger bound book that they've included in some of the other limited editions like the henry ford piece and in the original runwell that it all came with a, a book so this is kind of unique and let's let's take a listen Great Atlantic Ocean to the wide Pacific shore To the queen of flowing mountains for the hills and by the shore She's mighty tall and handsome and she's known quite well by all She came on down from Birmingham on the Wabash Cannonball Well now listen to the jingle, to the rumble and the roar As she flies along the woodland through the hills and by the shore Hear the mighty rush of the engine and the lonesome hobo's call no changes can be taken on the Wabash Cannonball. Wabash Cannonball! On the Ion Turntable. I'm going to go ahead and flip it over here. And this is the Set Me Down on a Cloud side. Certainly go on YouTube and check out uh, other versions of the Wabash Cannonball. <laughs> Long intro there. Wabash Cannonball Canfield watch. I really love it. It comes with this record where you can enjoy some uh, vintage and nostalgic American music. Peter Von Panda, out! <laughs>